Good morning. It's Sunday. It's March 7th. And this is just going to be a quick video to show people the indirect lighting. Now, these moldings up here are from Auric Decor, O-R-A-C space D-E-C-O-R. I saw them at the kitchen and bath show last year, obviously when Las Vegas was not shut down with the insanity of what's going on now. But that's a discussion for another day. So what I decided to do is I like indirect lighting, but I didn't want to put in a tray ceiling because the more I tried to put in a tray ceiling, the nuttier the design got in the ceiling. The other issue with tray ceilings is they can be somewhat of a challenge to insulate given their structural limitations. They also cost more money. Although money wasn't a driving force, I was mainly interested in the insulation properties. So I'm gonna demonstrate what the current setup is for the indirect lights. Lights on. I don't know how well it comes across in the camera, but the LED strips are inside of that molding. So you can't see the LED strips, but what you get is the indirect lighting. Now it's supposed to be dimmable. We'll see how that goes. And this will require some testing. Now, so this is the, obviously, living room. So it's on its own separate circuit. Then we'll look at the kitchen, which is on its own separate circuit. And you probably already got beaten me on this one. Why would I have them on different circuits? Well, I will finish with the hallway LEDs. So this is the hallway. The idea being that let's say it's late at night and you're asleep and you're in one of the two bedrooms back here. The doors are closed as doors often are. You go into the bedroom, you're going to sleep and suddenly you say, oh, I think I'm gonna go out into the hallway. So you open up the door and you're greeted by indirect light. And we all know from having lived the many years we have that having direct light in your eyes when you first wake up is kind of a bummer. But because it's indirect, you don't have that problem. It's illuminated enough that you can see what's on the floor, you can see what's on the walls. You've got adequate light for what you need the light for which is not tripping, falling, or getting lost. So you decide, oh, the sun is up, and the sun is up. And you're saying, I'm gonna turn off the indirect light. But assume everybody's watching movies. So you've got the blackout shades, which obviously not there yet. You're watching TV, but you want some lighting in the kitchen area. Because one of the things about watching movies is people love to eat. So, now notice how it sort of flickers. That's because the camera is adjusting for what it perceives as the light source. The lights are not in fact flickering if that's on the video. So the kitchen, which now has its own indirect LED light, is presumably chill and mellow. Now, we take the IKEA cabinet control, or under light control, and voila, we have another way of controlling the ambient light while you're watching TV. So you can come over here, turn off the LEDs, and even have a mellower, more chill lighting environment. These lights aren't synchronized yet or don't have power. Normally there'd be under cabinet lighting there, under cabinet lighting there, but like everything, it requires a little tuning. We're not there yet. So as you're sitting in the living room with the blackout shades drawn, 
You look back there and you can see, oh man, I'm gonna go get something to eat. You don't disturb the people who are watching TV. Not that it really matters. Now you can turn off the light. The Ikea under cabinet lights, which are right there. They're very slim line. I like them and they're integrated into the cabinet. Then you come back here and say, oh, I really need more light for what I'm doing. Now, there are these pendant lights. Let's see if I get the right one. Well, this one's fired up. So you're working over the sink. Obviously, these, these pendant lights are, are fired up by something. Is it this one? No, those are the can lights. Is it this? Oh, there it is. So you can have those lights on. You can have the LEDs on. It's going to get bright, so get your sunglasses. You can have the under cabinet lights on. And lo and behold, you can have, that's the disposal, this light on. The goal with all these lights was to make sure that anybody who's in the kitchen has more than enough light to do whatever they want to do. Mission accomplished. And it's adjustable. Under cabinet lights off. Light over the sink off. The indirect lights are still on. Turn off the cam lights. Turn off the pendant lights. Turn off the LEDs. So it's very tunable. Oh. Yeah, that's the beauty of electronics. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Yeah, if you notice the LED strip isn't firing up, but that's a tuning issue. Voila, let's see if this one fires up. Oh, that one fires up fine. I wonder if it's the power source. Yeah, it must be the power source. And if you wanna be really mellow, these lights can be on in the hallway. I'm gonna put this control back. So imagine, these lights are on. When it's nighttime, you're gonna have more than enough light with those lights on to make your way from here into the kitchen. And then you can have this single pendant light on. Doesn't disturb the people watching TV but it gives you enough light to work in the kitchen. Or depending on your mood, and we all have moods, then you can fire up this. Now realize you don't get any direct light in your eyeballs. Even when you come down here, it's not a problem. Very tunable. That was the design goal when I started. And I think we've, I've met the design goal. Now the mudroom is not as sophisticated. The mudroom is a mudroom. Got that light, got that light. It's a mudroom. It's a three-way. So when you come in from the garage, you can hit this, light up the mudroom, sit here, take your shoes off, do whatever you want, washing machine, dryer, countertop, leave your stuff there, come through and go, oh, I'm gonna turn off the lights. Now these lights, these cabinets also have undermount lights, once again, so that if you're working over here, see how I've created a shadow? You won't get the shadow. And I don't know where the control is. There it is. Let's see if it works. Oh look, it works. Obviously none of these have been tuned. And that way you walk in here, nice indirect light. You can see your work surface. You're not creating any shadows when you're over it. By the way, the countertops are coming in the next two weeks. This cabinet I just got from Ikea. 
they back ordered it. And then you can turn off this light and go, oh, I'm gonna leave this area. Now, if you have guests in here and they decide they wanna to go to the bathroom, what they can do is leave those lights on in the mudroom, get up, walk over and go, oh, I've got some nice indirect light. I've got a nice path to the commode. I love the word commode. And whack, they can turn it on. Or, as we all know that when our it's two in the morning, we get up to go to the bathroom. This is more than enough light at two in the morning to find the toilet. And there you go. Well, it's a little hard to tell that's a toilet, but that's what it is. I'll turn on the light. Oh yeah. Yeah, toilet. And the lid slowly, slowly drops down. The idea being that you don't want that annoying wax sound. I think that sounds great. So, lid closes, your eyes are still adjusted to the dark. You make your way back to your bedroom. Bada boom, bada bing, you're in. These lights, which are very efficient, LEDs are very efficient, can remain on all night to provide a night light. So it's good to see the design plans happening. Oh, we gotta show you the closet. I think I may have shown you this before, but have you ever been in a closet, a supply closet, where it is so dark you can't see or find anything? Well, that's not the case for this closet because we mounted the lights vertically. Most lights are mounted up there. I think I've explained, I have no idea why people do that. But the nice thing is, is you get tons of light all the way from down here, all the way up. So if you're looking for something, maybe it's on a back shelf or it's in the back, most of the time you can't see stuff in closets. Closets are dark. So the plan was to mount the lights vertically. Now realize that if you have shelves, this is a code violation. It's a code violation because it used to be based upon incandescent lights. They don't want an incandescent light within 12 inches of a shelf because they're afraid the heat from an incandescent will start a fire. Well, clearly LEDs don't do that. I, mean, I wouldn't have my hand on an incandescent. I'd be screaming in pain right now off to the hospital with a first or second degree burn. And if I was strong enough, I could have a third degree burn. But the codes take a decade to catch up. We still have codes from the 40s, which make no sense at all. But that's the way the coding code community works, is they're stuck on old codes. So turn off the light, bada boom, bada bing. That's the way it's supposed to be. Oh, try to search for something in the drawer, in the mudroom. You have lights. So you're getting the concept that this is a very well illuminated home. During the day, we have sunlight. At night, we have tons of LEDs with different choices. I don't even know if this one. Oh, yes. And the light over the dining room table comes on. That's good. This switch controls the can lights that are outside. I can't really see them, but they're out there. They can be on timers. I had thought about for a while putting LED strips underneath the countertop and along the kick, toe kick, but that was getting a little too far out. The house is far out enough to begin with. That was just taking it to the next level. And I thought, yeah, I've done enough really wild stuff. There's no reason for me to go to that next level. But you'll see one of the popular things now appears to be having the LED strips underneath the toe kicks. I think it's really elegant, but like I said, I had to put a stop to my insanity somewhere. Because if you give me enough room, I will run and run and run. All right, oh yes, the mirror is up. The mirror is kind of cool, let's see. All right, 
you see these little lights that come on in the mirror, controlled by this switch. Well, at least it should be. And you hit this, and look, it's a mirror with an LED strip in the perimeter. These mirrors are not cheap. I think there's like $400. But the idea of putting the LED strips here is that if you have the lights coming down, it creates shadows. And I have been told, I do not know this for a fact, this is what I've been told, is that women and most people don't like the shadows that come down because it gives you this funny appearance in your face and makes you look old. So if you have the LED strip here, when I decide to start wearing makeup, you get a nice even exposure. And then you can hit that and turn it off. Or, I believe that does it too. Yes, see now it just discharged the light. Whereas if you have this light, you see how you get a shadow? You don't want shadows when you're doing makeup. Oh, let's see. All right, there's that light and that light over the toilet. There's that light over the shower. This gives you a peek at the tile for right now. It looks pretty darn good. Tim, the tile man, oh, did a great job. The grout selections, the tile, it all looks very nice to me. We did this little metal trim, which apparently is the hot thing to do. Actually, I did it about 10 or 15 years ago in the old house. Did the same thing down here with the tile kick toe kit. You don't want wood down on the floor because it's a bathroom. It gets wet. Wood absorbs water. Wood expands when it absorbs water. And it's a nice look with the gray paint, the tile, the penny tiles. Oh, let's see. That must be dirt. It's a nice piece. I like it. So that's about it. I'm trying to think what else other cool lighting things I've done. I really haven't. Oh yes, here's the closet where we do the interrogations. Assume that you've been captured by the enemy. I know this is getting a little weird. And they ask you a question. They put you in the interrogation closet and you're not answering. They turn on those lights and say, you tell us because it's like the bright shining lights that get, you, get in your face when you're being interrogated. And once again, it's the same concept of every closet. You can't find stuff in closets because people have mounted the lights up in the top of the closet. Makes no sense. But the same code that we talked about before says that these lights have to be at least 12 inches from the shelves. Well, there are going to be no shelves in here. This is a storage closet. It's a broom closet. Same thing. The other lighting touch is in the master closet. Once again, notice how the light is not put on the ceiling. That was purposeful, did it on purpose, of course. This light is here so that it shines down onto the shelving units. If it's up there, you get this incredible shadow. And we go on, you'll see that same design concept in this closet. Yeah. Notice how the light is located here, shining down into potential uh, shelving units. This, by the way, is a point for another access point. So if the Wi-Fi has problems with getting good coverage, that's already been pre-wired, so I can put another access point in. So if the person in this room says, oh, I can't get good Wi-Fi, because realize there's eight inches of concrete here. This is the tornado room with a security door. Oh, man, that's secure. Metal and traditional light. Because realize there'll be shelves here, but this is storage, and there'll be stuff stored along here. It was a compromise. Life is a compromise. I think that's about all the cool stuff. I guess I should finish off with the garage lights. My son Charlie and I, when 
We built the house up in Rochester. He came up with a brilliant idea of LED lights in the ceiling. It's a great look. Now, of course, he did his own, and I had the electrician do it. Why? I'm lazy. I have no desire to get up on a 17-foot, 18-foot ladder. No. Nah. The fall would hurt. Now, these switches were actually thought out. So this switch turns off the lights right at the opening of the garage, which makes sense. So when you come out here, you just hit the switch and that light comes on. The next lights are over here, which is the second switch. So if you just want to work in this area, you don't need those lights on. And the final switch, which is the motion light. The motion light is there for exactly what you think it's for, motion. And as you walk around the garage, let's say it's one in the morning, those lights come on. And notice how the light beams are going to the sides. They're not going that way or that way. So when this garage door opens at two in the morning, these motion lights detect the motion of the garage door. They come on. In addition, that light up there comes on. So if you're the kind of person shuts the garage door, dilly-dallies, but you're walking around, you at least have some light to do what you need to do. At least that's the plan. I like it. And notice how the light went off. Let's see if I can trigger it. Please, please, trigger, 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 trigger. Oh, come on, trigger. Hello, I'm here. Well, apparently that needs to be adjusted. All these things have little sensors. So that is the lighting tour. A lot of thought went into it, of course, because I love being able to see what I'm doing. So today being Sunday, it's about 25 degrees Fahrenheit outside. It's cold. I'm tired of the cold, but this next couple of weeks, it's supposed to get up in the 50s and 60s. It's gonna rain. Oh God, I love the rain. Things will get a little mushy and floody because all the snow has not completely melted, as you can see by looking out the window. So we have a chance of some mild flooding. I don't think it's going to be a lot because if it rains a lot and the ground is still frozen, the water just doesn't sink into the ground. The advantage of the rain is it washes away all the road salt so I can bring my little cars outside and have them drive on the road. I'm looking forward to that. Well, that's about it for the lights. I hope you're doing well. Sleep well, if you're still asleep. If you're awake, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I love you all. Keep all smiling. Right. Another edition on lighting. It's still Sunday. So you see these controls out here. These are pretty fancy. These control the can lights and the porch cover. I do not have any traditional lights by the door. The reason is that it causes light pollution when the lights are around the door. Very traditional approach. I love it to death. I don't have any problem with these lights. But when you're in the country and you're driving up to a house where there are no street lights, if you're driving up this driveway, you end up having your eyes blinded by the same lights that are supposed to help you. So if those lights are on and there are lights by the garage door and they come on as you drive up, suddenly you're getting all this light shining into your face. And if you're not 100% familiar with where you're driving, uh, that turns out to be bad things. Same thing for the person who's driving, coming home, going into the garage. These can lights stop light pollution. They shine down on the ground. They're put here and here to define the edges of the garage door. And then when the garage door opens, the lights in the garage turn on. So you have light here, light here, 
garage door opens and you have light. So it makes it easy and pleasant to go into the garage because you don't have a lot of light pollution. You don't have light shining into your eyes. Same thing, if people are driving along the road, they can see that the lights are on because the lights are shining down, but there's no horizontal light coming out to the street. It's light pollution, it's a small detail, but why not? Apparently it's the hot trend now. I really like it. I'm cool with it. This of course is my crazy and wild idea of putting all my electrical outlets in the ceiling as opposed to the wall. Because if you, as I've explained before, if you put them here in the wall, then each cord that runs out has to run across the porch. Well, that's just stupid because then you're going to trip on it or you're going to have to unplug it to clean off the porch. If they're up there, only tall people who are not afraid of ladders can do that, which is kind of a bummer. I'm, I'm afraid of heights. I've always been afraid of heights. It almost cost me my time as a flight surgeon at Fort Rucker in Alabama, but they said, eh, they gave me some slack. So you plug in the, the cord. It can then come down run down the front of this and then as i've said before it can power the snowman or the turkey or whatever you want there will be pots along here in order to break up this large space you can have lights in the pots it's just designed for that it's also out of the stream of water these are still waterproof boxes they have to be by code but if you have all the outlets along here and you're getting this horizontal rain clearly you have more options for water to penetrate it. Probably never happened. The other advantage of putting them up here is that you don't have to put it down here. And putting light boxes, outlets along the side of the wall is bad because it causes a penetration into the living space and penetrations leak air. Air makes houses uncomfortable when it's going like this. So those are the multiple reasons why I still like this setup. The motion lights have not been tuned yet. They're on every corner of the house for security. All these lines are here for the security cameras. I have a little video on security decisions. And if you see, if you can see way down there, you can see another, I'll try to get my finger in the film. You can see another security camera, uh, another security light. And since the house is a square, it works out great. There's no places for someone to hide outside of the light stream, which is a good idea. And we'll come back to this. So, been a long video, but I always like to document what's going on, let people who cannot visit the site see what's going on. And we'll turn off these lights. Of course, uh, I don't know how to run it yet. I guess I toggle. Uh, we'll get there eventually. Give me about seven or eight hours. Is it this one? Well, I won't torment you with my troubles, but, but I will learn how to program it. So once again, keep smiling, have fun. Talk to you later.